Happening now, a local parent is speaking out after her daughter's teacher receives national attention for standing up to her school's COVID mandates. What the mother has to say. Plus, the county clerk candidates debate. Our team are breaking it down, focusing on the issues they discuss. Well, this afternoon could be an active weather day. We have some strong to severe storms possible this afternoon. We'll break it all down next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. This is a first defense weather alert. And thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould and today we start with the weather. Just this morning, our region was upgraded to an increased risk for severe storms today. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joining us live now to explain what we have to look out for. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin, and that's right. We have been upgraded with our risk for severe weather. This is a late season risk. We usually don't get uh, severe thunderstorms this late in the season, but we do have some possible this afternoon. We can already see some breaks in the cloud cover across uh, the uh, the uh, sky cam coming uh, from uh, Randolph Peaches and Cream. So we already have some peaks of sunshine already starting to peek through. All the rain that's moving through now, these showers are not severe. So this is not really going to be the severe activity. It's going to be later on this afternoon. In fact, here's the current severe weather outlook uh, from the Storm Prediction Center. All the yellow shaded area is a slight risk, a level two out of scale of one to five. And something we don't really show very often because it is kind of confusing is is the tornado risk. There is a 5% uh, tornado risk across the area. Now, understand that is a relatively low tornado risk, but there is a chance of a spin up tornado through the afternoon hours. And of course, we'll be here keeping our eyes on it, but understand the main threats really are gonna be damaging winds and hail, but there could be a small tornado in this as well. So we'll keep our eyes on it. 70 to 75 through the afternoon. Storms arrive usually between three to five is looking like our time frame for these storms. And of course, we'll give you all the details with future scan and the seven day forecast later on in the show. Justin. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll continue to uh, watch this Dakota. Thank you. And we'll be tracking these storms throughout the day here live on WNYNewsNow.com, our website. And be sure to download our mobile app. Just search WNY News Now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, and uh, we will keep you up to date with live breaking news alerts. Well, a parent from Cherry Creek is speaking out about their children's education after a Pine Valley school history teacher gained national attention from protesting COVID mandates in the school. Our Dante Roberts joins us live now in studio to explain more about what this parent is upset about. Dante? Justin, Pine Valley School history teacher Angela Bittinger first spoke out during a town hall meeting last month. She has gained a plethora of supporters, but not everybody takes the same stance. Yes, the communications. Uh, I'm Amber Reinhart, A M B E R R I N E A. A communication specialist and mother of three, Amber Reinhardt, has a child in Bittinger's class. All of her children go to the Pine Valley School, and she says the situation is more complex than what it is in the news. It explains that as an educator herself, she worries that Benninger's teaching methods and rhetoric about the mandates will impact children negatively. I've been a college professor for the past 16 years, and my specialization is in communication. I specifically specialize in language and how it can be weaponized and used to manipulate. So seeing this happen anywhere is terrifying coming from a teacher, but particularly in one in my own hometown where my child has been in that class and I have firsthand knowledge of the things that have been said in that class that are extraordinarily inappropriate and biased. The parent claims that her daughter's teacher is forcing her opinions on her students. Furthermore, she says Bittinger is using the situation to distract from the district's investigation. I can't speak to that specifically because it's all part of the investigation that's ongoing, but the idea that the stance is about just the vaccine mandate, it's not true. That's only a very, very small part of it. But that's an easy thing to throw you know, the blame it and say, well, that's why I'm getting in trouble. It takes a very, very complicated situation and it makes an easy scapegoat out of it. And that's very, very dangerous when people start doing that, especially people in the education system. Overall, the consensus Reinhardt comes to is that we should all respect each other and we need to learn to agree to disagree. She says at the end of the day, the children are who are suffering the most. 
Hearing part of the investigation into Binninger's teaching methods was held on Tuesday. Binninger tells us that the school is now looking into her social media posting about the school. Live in studio, Dante Roberts, WNY News Now. Municipal leaders in Jamestown have received a $3 million state grant to help pay for water main replacement. The New York State's governor's office announced the news yesterday. The state funding is among $44 million, which was approved by the State Environmental Facilities Corporation for similar projects statewide. In addition to grants, there is also interest-free financing available to help develop infrastructure projects that ultimately protect or improve water quality. With Election Day just a few weeks away, a debate to help inform voters about the Chautauqua County Clerk candidate's priorities took place in Jamestown last night. Incumbent Republican Larry Barmore and Democratic challenger David Sally took the stage during the forum hosted by WRFA in partnership with WJTN and WNY News Now to share why they deserve the job. Our Julia Grass is breaking down what the two had to say. The candidates were asked what they believe the biggest issue the county clerk will face during their next term. While both agreed the DMV needs the most attention, the reasoning differed. The county retains 12.7% of all funds collected at the county DMV offices. This amount has not changed in over 30 years, despite the fact that the state continues to siphon business from the local DMVs to improve their income. Clerk Larry Barmore also noted that the increase of online DMV services reduces the funds that remain local. Instead, they go directly to the state. His opponent, David Sally, however, noted issues that the COVID-19 pandemic brought attention to. The biggest issue is serving all of the people. You cannot run a government office as if it's a business. A business focuses on profit and loss. If a portion of the market isn't profitable, then they don't serve that market. A government office has to serve everyone. He mentioned the significant Hispanic population in Chautauqua County and the DMV's lack of Spanish-speaking employees. Barmore assured voters that the Dunkirk DMV does employ a Spanish speaker, which Sally doesn't believe is enough. There are civic service exams for Spanish-speaking clerks. We would need to advertise them heavily. The ideal situation would be a minimum of one at each Department of Motor Vehicles and somebody at the county office who could go to whatever office was needed. Barmore also explained that funding is an issue when it comes to staffing. Essentially, lack of revenue leads to lack of service. Sally countered by saying the physical issue of space, stating that the building lacks parking and adequate handicapped accessibility. I had a spot all picked out and the representatives from the city of Jamestown came to the legislature and asked them not to approve it because they wanted me to keep the DMV downtown because they were trying to improve the downtown. Another important issue the debate focused on was how each candidate would run the position. Barmore believes that the seat should be held by someone who understands business. We try to do everything that we can to help every person. Every person is welcome in our office. And all our offices are um, a user-based funded um, system, so to speak. Um, if you need our clerk's office or our DMV or our weights and measures or whatever, you pay for the service. If you don't need it, you don't pay. The Republican also claims that he has saved taxpayers roughly $750,000 since he took the position in 2013. The Democrat reviewed his past business experience as a programmer and technical support for multiple businesses as their public-facing employee. He's been complaining about lines being down uh, at the state level and not getting communication through. It goes much faster for repairs if you have a professional at each end working on the problem. Meanwhile, Sally says that the county should have backup measures in place if the state system fails. He also suggested a new method of service at the DMV to reduce wait times. What you do is you switch to an accessibility scenario, doctor's office. You 
call up and you have people call a phone number or go onto a website and make an appointment and say, I want to do this. And they say, okay, you need document A, B, C. The fee will be so much. It'll take 20 minutes. Can you come in at Wednesday at 1120? And this way there is no line. Barmore explains that this method has previously been unsuccessful in the area. The governor mandated that we have an appointment only system. I knew it wasn't going to work, but uh, we did it anyways. And within a week, uh, we were booked to three, four months ahead. Um, Many people made multiple appointments, which they never showed up for. But, you know, we have no way of policing that. Julia Grass, WNY News Now. Julia, thank you. A debate between the candidates for Chautauqua County Executive takes place next Thursday at 8 p.m., Following a Meet the Candidates forum at 6 o'clock, the programs will be streamed live here on WNY News Now, WNYNewsNow.com, our mobile app, Facebook page, and on Channel 716 on Roku. Well, 70 years ago today, I Love Lucy made its television premiere. And now the show, still loved by millions of fans worldwide. In fact, the program has inspired many, including a Jamestown resident who has decorated his car in the show's memory. Founder of the Los Contrincantes Car Club, Joe, Jose Sanchez, says he wanted to find a way to honor Lucille Ball, whose image in recent years has benefited the area with the Lucy Desi Museum and National Comedy Center. Well, to do that, he installed a vinyl mural on the hood of his vehicle featuring an image of the starlet in the Comedy Center. The car also has an I Heart Lucy uh, written along the side of it, and a copy of one of the many murals around town which features a scene from the show. It isn't the first time Sanchez featured Lucy on his vehicle. In fact, he says he plans to keep it going in the future. Everything is customized. Um, I try to do it every, every year, something different, so people don't get used to it. Last year I had Lucy and Desi. And Desi. Um, maybe next year I, I'll, I'm aiming for something different, um, probably with the same Lucy theme. Fans worldwide can celebrate the anniversary virtually this year by taking part in the Lucy Desi Museum's new Picture Mosaic Experience. You're invited to submit your photos to help celebrate, create a Lucy Desi 70th anniversary mural, which will take shape in real time as fans post their photos online. To do that, it's easy. You can check it out online and submit your photos at mosaic.com. LucyMosaic.com. We have that and more posted now at WNY News Now. Certainly a big anniversary that has a lot of connection here to Jamestown. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comment section down below. It's great to see uh, Jamie. Good to see Charlie, Dean, Robert, and uh, Patricia as well. Hopefully you all are having a great day. We appreciate you so much for joining us here on Facebook Live and on Channel 716 on Roku. We have a lot more to get to this half hour news wise including what New York now has legalized recreational marijuana what nearby state could soon do the same thing and later the deets on an event which will honor healthcare heroes here in Jamestown. Stay with us as WNY News Now. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. What could you lose in a home fire? Your possessions? Your home? Your memories? Don't let your world go up in smoke. Make sure you have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones because fire is everyone's fight. This message was brought to you by the Jamestown Fire Department and the Chautauqua Safety Village. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. 
Welcome to Honest John's Pizzeria, where you are the most important customer. Everything from freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has it all. And don't forget the ice cream! Order online today or check out our two great locations with buffets ready for every appetite. Don't I have the best job in the world? Located along the Amish Trail, the Randolph Retail Company offers a variety of clothing, jewelry, and gifts for any occasion. Offering uptown merchandise at small town prices, our locally owned business balances quality and value. With complimentary gift wrap here at the Randolph Retail Company, we pride ourselves in personal service. Check out our Facebook page or stop in today at 127 Main Street, Randolph, just a 20 minute drive from Jamestown. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Former President Bill Clinton is hospitalized in a Southern California Medical Center's ICU. That's according to doctors at the University of California, Irvine. Clinton first reported feeling ill Tuesday during a private event for his foundation. The illness is not COVID-related. Instead, doctors say the former president might have had a blood infection known as sepsis. They believe it may have started in a urinary tract infection that spread to his bloodstream, a common occurrence in older people. Hospital officials say the 75-year-old former president is responding well to IV antibiotics and could be discharged as soon as tomorrow. His wife Hillary, the former Democratic nominee for president, New York senator and secretary of state is with him. A Clinton spokesperson saying he's in good spirits and thankful to the hospital staff for providing him with care. A COVID booster shot could be just days away for the Moderna vaccine after an FDA advisory plan panel recommended emergency authorization. This means just like the Pfizer vaccine, eligible people could receive a booster of the Moderna vaccine six months after their second dose. Haley Potter with our news partner Erie News Now has more on what this means. A step in the right direction in the fight against COVID-19. Thursday, the FDA advisory panel unanimously recommended emergency authorization of booster shots for the Moderna vaccine. That's for people age 65 and up, as well as adults at high risk for disease and those who are frequently exposed at work. I think that it's about time that we do have that booster shot for individuals who got Moderna. And then hopefully tomorrow for Johnson & Johnson, there'll be instructions for you know what to do to get boosted if you're in one of those high risk or older age groups. This recommendation is similar to Pfizer's green light for their booster vaccine last month. I think today's conversation was what everyone was expecting given that Pfizer was already previously approved to do that third dose of a booster shot. Epidemiologist Dr. Becky Dawson says the booster for Pfizer is the same dosage as the first shots. For Moderna, the dose is cut in half because the first dose of Moderna is larger than that of Pfizer. This time, what Moderna has said is for your booster dose, you don't need as high. So they cut that dose in half. Thursday's announcement was big, but the FDA commissioner still has to approve the vaccine for emergency use authorization so that it can be used. And then since getting a shot is a medical procedure, the CDC also has to approve. CDC provides health care providers, so your nurses and your pharmacists and your physicians who are able to give you that shot, they actually will help individual, they'll provide the guidance to the healthcare workforce about how to dose, right, and when to dose and who gets it. Which Dawson says should only take a few days. Haley, thank you. Today, the FDA advisory panel will discuss boosters for that Johnson & Johnson single dose, and they will talk about whether to allow mixing and matching, like getting a Pfizer booster after two Moderna shots. Well, this week, a Republican lawmaker from Northwest PA introduced a bipartisan bill to legalize adult use of cannabis in the state. Senate Bill 473 comes just two weeks after a similar measure was announced. RPA Capital Correspondent Brendan Scandalin spoke with the sponsor of the bill and tells us more from Harrisburg. Recreational cannabis bills are in the works in both sides of the state capitol. One thing that stands out about Senate Bill 473 is that it is a bipartisan bill introduced by Erie's own Republican State Senator Dan Laughlin. It, it's coming, uh, whether it's this bill or not. 
Uh, every state around us is legalizing it. On Tuesday, Senator Laughlin introduced Senate Bill 473 with Philadelphia State Senator Sharif Street. And what we're trying to do with this bill is simply regulate it, tax it, keep it out of the hands of children. Laughlin says it's important to keep people away from black market or other illegal suppliers and to point consumers in the right direction. You know that if you buy it through a regulated market, the product won't be laced with fentanyl. Or, or some other drug. Laughlin says the bill would also help create close to 50,000 family sustaining jobs, especially for people disproportionately affected by the war on drugs. House Bill 2050 was introduced two weeks ago by Representatives Wheatley and Frankel, but has not seen Republican support. However, Laughlin says support is growing in the Senate. The shift has been very dramatic uh, as far as you know, people openly talking about uh, cannabis in Pennsylvania. Senator Laughlin also tells me that he and Senator Street are open to working with both parties to improve and amend the bill in order for it to become law. Reporting in Harrisburg for Erie News Now, I'm Brendan Scanlon. Brendan, thank you. One of Jamestown's largest churches are hosting a special prayer for health care workers this weekend. St. Luke's Episcopal Church on North Main Street celebrated the his heroic actions of those workers at the start of pandemic. However, over the year and a half later, the church says they've grown weary and lost some of their appreciation. That's why they're hosting this special service on Sunday at 10 a.m., which will offer prayers for community health care workers and feature nurse practitioner Elizabeth Gatman as a guest. As a frontline worker herself, Gatman has seen the public fatigue. Specifically, she says she's noticed an uptick in beliefs that are contradicting science. Additionally, she says people who are struggling to trust or believe what she says about epidemiology, COVID, or vaccines is something that she will address during the service. Community members are welcome to submit names of healthcare workers they know who they would like to have prayed for. Certainly what a great event to honor these heroes. Let us know what you think about this and more in the comments down below. We uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, now let's turn to Dakota for a full look at our weather forecast as uh, we prep for quite possibly a, a busy afternoon. Um, but really, it's been quiet earlier this week, Dakota, and I hear mm -hmm. that's going to probably be the same you know, beyond the storms today. Yes, I mean, it's not going to be today. It's not going to be this weekend, but we are going to see a little bit of drier and quieter weather coming our way. Let's get right into it and we'll show you the almanac from yesterday. We topped out at 75, started the day at 64, 84 and 18 are the records for today. So as you can see, we have a few peaks of sunshine from the HD News Now cam. Right now we're at 68 as of noon hour. We're watching the dew point because as the dew point rises, not only does it A, become more muggier, but B, the dew point, when it reaches around 65, that's kind of a kind of a red flag or at least a yellow flag to kind of let you know, hey, the atmosphere is getting a little bit juicy. And uh, that really is the thing that we're talking about for today. So as we mentioned at the top of the show, the uh, Storm Prediction Center has placed all of, well, much of Western New York world, uh, basically all of the Southern tier in Northwestern Pennsylvania under a standard slight risk. That is a level two out of scale of one to five. And uh, the main threats with this is mainly gonna be some strong damaging winds, maybe some large hail and some heavy rainfall. And there is a low, wanna stress here, low tornado threat. It is not zero, but it, it but it's very low, but there could be at least an isolated spin up tornado later on this afternoon. So let's break it down for you. The timing on this is really going to be three o'clock this afternoon to six o'clock. That's the timing for at least the, the uh, strongest activity. There could be some strong storms after six o'clock, but this is going to be the main timing window. Again, the main threats, damaging winds, large hail, heavy rain. And again, we want to stress low tornado threat, but just because it's low doesn't mean you should shrug it off. It is a threat and we will watch it through the afternoon and the greatest impact is going to be across the western southern tier mainly Chautauqua County is looking like going to be the main threat with that. The rain that's falling across uh, Chautauqua County right now is not severe and uh, this is mainly just plain rain showers but this is all out ahead of a warm front that's going to sweep through first then a strong cold front sweeps through later this afternoon that brings the severe potential and into tonight.
tonight. So let's show it to you on the newest run of Future Scan. Notice the rain showers through the afternoon, but those are not severe. This is going to be our severe thread here. Notice the uh, patches of red popping up in here. That indicates the heavier amounts of rainfall and where the thunderstorms will be. Then here comes a second round as well, more or less a third round as the cold front moves through. Again, some of this could be strong uh, to severe through the overnight hours. We'll watch those, of course, and then we'll actually see lake effect rain setting up through the day on Saturday and into Sunday as cold air rushes across at relatively warm water, a Lake Erie that will create some lake effect rain. And this is storm potential that comes off future scan. Again, this is a product that we have that tries to show you the better chance of thunderstorm development. And you can see we're looking for the reds and the yellows, and you can see them popping up here through the afternoon. So there is going to be more than enough atmospheric instability to allow these uh, thunderstorms to pop this afternoon. So stay with us right here. Of course, should there be a tornado warning, we will go on the air if need be. So the next seven days are right here. Cool down on Saturday and Sunday. Look at that surge of cool air after the cold front moves through. And then by Tuesday and Wednesday, we should dry out to at least a good supply of sunshine and temperatures return back into the 60s. We'll take a break. Be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Welcome back to WNY News Now. In an effort to help our furry friends find a forever home, we're partnered with the Chautauqua County Humane Society and my favorite segment, it's the Pet of the Week. Joining us live is Amanda Sublet to talk more about this week's featured furry friend. And he looks like he's really interested in what's going on, Amanda. She, um, she is Laura. <laughs> She absolutely loves Brian, and that's what she was doing. She was trying to get closer to him. She is a lover. She's so sweet, cuddly. <laughs> I can't help but fall in love with her. I know anybody who meets her will. She's about three years old. She's definitely going to get along with everybody. Cats do need to know how to handle a dog, though, because she does like to play. Hi. Good girl. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. What a good girl. She does have a lot of energy. She likes to play. She likes it even more if she can have another dog to play with as well. But a good walk will definitely take care of that. And then cuddling up on the couch. Sounds like a perfect day to me. I do hear that she likes her pizza on Thursday. All right. <laughs> Yeah, who, who wouldn't, <laughs> right? Uh, and well, we talked uh, before about this, I think, but especially with active dogs like our friend Flora here, you really need to have a good routine. And a lot of that involves play, uh, which I imagine as an owner of a dog, that's something that you, you know, can get into a routine of going out, walking, throwing the ball, and it'll really, really help both the dog and the owner in the long run. Definitely. Um, honestly, both people and dogs are creatures of habit, so it makes it really easy to set up that routine and stick with it. Dogs like to know what to expect when, and, and that's going to make a huge difference in their daily life. Yeah, absolutely. How, how is she with, with kids? I know you mentioned that cats might need to kind of know how to handle a dog, uh, but has, has she been tested in that? Do you think she would do well? She's going to do great. She really thrives on the attention. I would not hesitate to bring her home to interact with my children. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Amanda and Flora, thank you both so much for coming on today. Uh, and I just wanted to take one moment to really thank you, Amanda, for your time with these segments. Uh, I know you're, you're moving on to another position within the Humane Society, so uh, today will be your last newscast for now. But thank you, thank you so much for coming on. Thank and you. It, it, it means so much to us to be able to to get these dogs on TV and try to get them into a good home. And you've done an excellent job, so thank you. Thank you so much. So again, to learn more about our friend Flora here or any resident of the shelter for that matter, all you have to do is log on to chqhumane.org.
Certainly, she looks like she's uh, she's ready for some fun. Um, hopefully, not too much fun with uh, the chance of thunderstorms today. Let us know what you guys think about this She'd and make more. A good buddy. She she would a good thunder buddy. Thunder buddy. Yes. Thunder buddy. You need a thunder buddy in your. I need one. Where's <laughs> right. mine? We we should get a dog for the studio. That would be great. Somebody who could just cuddle up. We used to have the news hound, mm -hmm. Ben the news hound, but he's he's no more with us. He's still okay. He's just not, he doesn't right. work here anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Of course, news does continue 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com. And as we mentioned, Dakota will be tracking those severe storms. Everybody's here. Today. We'll watch it. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that. Otherwise, we're back on Monday. Bye.